leader of the third party. Oh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. In yesterday's budget, this Premier had an opportunity to rise to the challenges we face today by building community health centres or ensuring that there is accessible transit across our province. We could have had preventative, preventative mental health care and brought people with disabilities out of poverty. Let that sink in for a moment, Honourable Speaker. We have been pleading for this so-called progressive NDP government, a majority government, to do the bare minimum and lift people with disabilities out of poverty, and they didn't do it. We could have strengthened our communities and focused on the well-being of British Columbians. The Premier has a majority government, a $6 billion surplus and an $80 billion budget, but instead of creating systems change, some renters will get an extra $33 a month six years after the government promised it. One-off rebates, unmet promises and holding up old ideas are not going to make change. This is a budget that delivers status quo in a time when leadership is needed and I would argue, Honourable Speaker, that we will always get status quo as long as we keep using GDP to measure success instead of following the lead of other countries who are budgeting and measuring their economies with well-being. My question is to the Premier. How is he going to measure success? Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and I thank the member for the question. And I'll tell the member what uh, measure success is, is in putting in a budget that supports people, putting a budget forward that is going to support people right across this province. It makes record investments in supports to people with costs and, and put more money in people's pockets. You know, Minister Speaker, I have gotten so many, so many feedback, so much feedback, so many emails, texts from people who are so grateful for the free contraception. contraception. We are hearing from people who are saying the expansion of the K-12 school food programs is incredible for people, like uh, families across the spectrum, like low income or not, they are so happy because families are saying, we know that our kids are going to school and, it, when they, and teachers are saying to me, when those kids can get those healthy meals, they can learn better. And so we're hearing that as well. You know, I don't understand that you know the member is, is, is almost chastising that the like this is the first time since 2006 there is an increase to the shelter rate for persons with disabilities. <laughs> First time that there's an increase Thank for uh, persons on, on income assistance, and we have to look at these things. And there's many other things in the budget, many other things that are contributing to affordability in this province. Leader of the third party supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And it's it's very it's it's very interesting to me because the difference between a, a status quo and a GDP oriented as opposed to well-being, would be that we would move to universal food programs in schools, that we wouldn't increase the shelter rate by $125, but we would ensure that people with disabilities are lifted out of poverty. This is the difference between status quo and leadership. And another thing is clear, Honourable Speaker, this is not a climate leader's budget. In the Fraser Valley, damage from the atmospheric river is estimated to have been $17 billion, and yet climate is little more than an afterthought in this budget. In fact, this budget reduces the three-year funding of Clean BC by $300 million. Reduces. A climate leader's budget would, not, would stop short-sighted investments. It would have enough money to protect our communities from inevitable fires and floods, it would have a restoration economy at its core with good paying jobs for years to come. It would invest in community based clean energy, not doubling down on expanding fracking. A climate leader would not rely on a panel of 13 people, 12 of them bankers, to guide its decision making. It would look to the solution makers across BC who care about their communities. Honourable Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Let me point out again. A $300 million reduction to funding in Clean BC, this government's favourite shield. Why is climate an afterthought in this budget? Minister of Finance. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, in Budget 2023, we are investing $1.4 billion in clean, sustainable futures. <laughs> expanding active transportation networks, we're pricing carbon pollution, we're bringing in eight new forest landscape planning tables to work with First Nations to protect more old growth and, and support sustainable forestry, over $100 million for parks and other recreation sites and trails, including to upgrade facilities and improve accessibility, more funding for the Clean BC Go Electric Commercial Vehicle Pilot Program to help businesses move to commercial zero emission vehicles. We're increasing the Climate Action Tax Credit, Mr. Speaker, so that when the carbon, credit or carbon tax does rise, people will actually get money to complement that. We're making sure that we're putting more money back into people's pockets. We're making sure that we're supporting people in this province. And that's what this budget is about. It's supporting people, Mr. Speaker.